Georgia is more than a state. It's an icon. Larger than life. Land more grand and gorgeous than any state should possess. People bigger, more industrious and successful than any other place in the world. Georgia's political heroes have been just as big, influencing not just Georgia, but our country and the world. Names like Paul Coverdell, Richard Russell, Bo Calloway, and Sam Nunn. Men whose hearts were right. Men who put people ahead of politics and party. Because of that, Georgia grew and prospered. But in recent years, the prosperity has faltered. Jobs are lost. Traffic snarls. Growth has raged. Public education is a myth. Much of Georgia has been left behind as Atlanta swells ready to bust her seams. Where is today's political giant who let this happen? Who let our beloved state collapse by abusing his power to keep himself and his party in office? Who is this man who put politics ahead of the people? Many just call him King Roy. <laughs> Governor Roy Barnes seemed to mean well at first. Then it seemed the power of the gold dome just went to his head. He forgot the people. This wily old trial lawyer just thought he knew better than us on any subject. He blamed our hard-working, underpaid teachers for the problems in public education instead of the real problem. His desire to rule from Atlanta how every classroom in the state should operate. While he's created more traffic management bureaucracy than you can shake a stick at, has the traffic in your neighborhood gotten one bit better? He even decreed what our new flag would be, and suddenly it was flying without us getting to voice a word. Then, solely to keep himself and his party in power, he's divided our neighborhoods through a forced redistricting that has torn our state apart. As the power of the gold coursed through his veins, King Roy Barnes made promises upon promises and kept hardly a one. There's a new day dawning just over the horizon in Georgia. It comes in the form of a quiet, humble man born and raised in Bonaire, outside Macon. His name is Sonny Perdue. Well, well, well. How in the world y'all today? How you doing? Who you got here? Hey, buddy. Well, what y'all hear about politics? I heard a fellow Bonaire fellow was running for go. You ready to make it? I think so. <laughs> Bonaire is a place where people don't take too kindly to egos or self-importance. It's a place where a workhorse has far more value than a show horse. Well, Sonny's been a workhorse in Bonaire since the day he was born. His daddy kept pretty good reins on him when he was <laughs> coming up, and he learned how to treat people. Sonny Perdue and I were friends in the third grade. I happened to be his teacher and loved him then and love him now. He went to the University of Georgia, served in the Air Force, and started out as a veterinarian, Dr. Purdue. Then he built several agribusinesses here from the ground up, created good jobs, made a payroll, and married a pretty girl from Atlanta, the former Mary Ruff. He is always himself. No matter what situation he's in, he's very transparent and honest about who he is, and he doesn't try to pretend to be something that he's not in order to influence people. My family's why I'm running for governor. As Mary and I look at those precious little twin granddaughters, I want Georgia to be as bright for them as the Georgia I remember. Like most everyone in Georgia, Sonny Perdue was born a Democrat. Once his businesses were on solid ground, he ran for the Georgia State Legislature and won. In just four years, he was elected Senate Majority Leader. In the Democrat Party of Georgia, there was no faster rising star. You know, a lot of people have asked me why I changed parties. And I came to realize, as I rose to the leadership ranks of President Pro Tem of the Senate, that a lot of my colleagues didn't believe like I did. All that mattered to them was maintaining control or staying in power. 
And that wasn't what I wanted for Georgia. I wanted a Georgia that was bright for all the people, not just a few. He's honest enough to do whatever he knows is right, no matter what, Republican or Democrat. Well, I believe we need to have a man of uh, Sonny's character and morals, uh, you know, representing the whole state of Georgia. He's definitely a good listener. I, he and I have a very similar conversation style. You know, if we have something to say, we're going to say it. You know, if I need to tell him something or, or bounce some ideas off of him, he's, he's always there. The new Georgia of Sonny Perdue will be a place where people come first, where ills like public education, jobs in our economy, the cost of health care, stalled traffic, runaway growth, and Hartsfield Airport are finally cured not just talk to death. Sonny Perdue's an innovator. He thinks out of the box. He takes the best ideas of people and figures out how to make them work and then pushes real hard to implement those ideas. Why don't we take some of all this money we're spending now and work with private enterprise to build out a high-speed universal internet access for all of our citizens in Georgia, where every child could have access to a world that they may have never imagined before, where people could work at home. They may live in Clayton, or Brunswick, or Dalton, or Valdosta, anywhere in the state, and work for a company in Atlanta. That way we could disperse the economy while reducing the traffic in Atlanta, and all of Georgia would benefit. Recently, the economic slowdown has cost me and hundreds of people like me my job. I understand that since Roy Barnes has been governor, we've lost more jobs in Georgia than any other state. Governor Barnes is up there in his big mansion in the Philae Menons, and he forgets we out here in the working world eating pork and beans. I've got a job, but it's different from the one that I've had for the past nine years. I was a public school teacher. When Roy Barnes started blaming teachers for his failed educational reform, I moved to a private school. One obvious answer is to move education decision-making away from Roy Barnes and his newly created bureaucracies and back to the local level. Get it out of Atlanta. Roy hadn't proven to me that he's much of a teacher. Sonny Perdue is going to win the election in November. He's going to defeat Roy Barnes, and he should. He's going to defeat him because he's a good man and can govern this state. He's not arrogant. But the real reason is the people of Georgia who voted for Roy Barnes four years ago are not going to do it again. He's someone anyone can vote for. He's sharp as a tack, and he's not from Atlanta. He's a solid Republican, but he knows the other side. And he's running against someone whose chronic abuse of power has even turned off his safe votes. All you got to do is travel this state and you hear it everywhere. Sonny Perdue is going to win and beat Roy Barnes in November. When you spend your days and nights being shifty and crafty and finding new ways to trick the people to stay in power, the people eventually find out the days of King Roy Barnes are over. There's a new day dawning in Georgia. The doors to state government will be flung open to the people. New ideas will be encouraged and rapidly implemented. Schools will flourish traffic diminish. As businesses are unleashed and grow, jobs will return. And as Georgia recovers, new employers will flood the state. I believe the founders of our great country got it right when they said, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We need to bring people together to create solutions to our challenges. We don't need one guy sitting in the Capitol telling us how to live our lives thinking that he knows better than we do. You know what my farm friends tell me across the state, and I think all Georgians can understand? They say it's time to rotate the crops in Atlanta. There's a new day dawning in Georgia. It's going to be sunny and bright.